Bienvenida a to Latina Literati. If you enjoy wonderful places, books, ideas, and people, then this is the channel for you. You can hear the waves breaking in the background, so you, I'm really on location here in Puerto Rico. But before I begin and tell you about the real pirate of the Caribbean, I want to dedicate this video. Tengo la dicha, la honra y la bendición de tener una madre boricua y es a ella que dedico estos videos sobre su isla del encanto. I am blessed with a boricua mother and it is to her that I dedicate these videos of her island. So there was a real pirate of the Caribbean. His name was Roberto Cofresi Ramirez de Arellano. And he came from an aristocratic family. His father was an Austrian noble and his mother came from the Spanish nobility from the kings of Navarra in northern Spain and was a relative of El Cid. And the family found itself in Puerto Rico. Roberto was the youngest of four children. He was born in Cabo Rojo, the 17th of June uh, in 1791. And the family uh, was absolutely impoverished by the time he was a young man. And because of the economic and political policies of the Spanish crown, he became a sailor and very quickly learned about the Eastern Caribbean and all of the islands, uh, their caves and their coves and the places to hide. He realized very quickly that he could make a modest living, but he couldn't actually live the life he wanted. So he banded together with some friends and family, and uh, they formed a pirate group. And he got himself several small sloops, uh, the most famous of which is called La Ana. And with these sloops, he would uh, attack both European and U.S. ships. He never attacked Caribbean ships. He focused on those that had been plundering this hemisphere now for hundreds of years. So you'll remember that there were galleons full of plunder, not just precious metals and stones, but also agricultural products that could be sold. And so he would plunder these, uh, he, he would take this plunder and he would share it with the people of Puerto Rico in the area of Cabo Rojo because they were facing a famine. And so he was beloved by the people and the oral traditions to this day continue that the Cofresi, el pirata de Cofresi, el pirata Cofresi or pirate Cofresi was a man of the people. He always, uh, he shared his wealth. He shared what he took back from the ships that were taking all of this uh, gold and silver and agricultural products and other things back to Europe and to the U.S. And eventually uh, he attacked so many U.S. ships <laughs> that the U.S. and Spain actually uh, came together to set a trap for him. And so a trap was set. And although he was able to escape to land, he was wounded, eventually caught, and he and his crew were convicted in San Juan and were, uh, and, and were convicted and tried. They were tried and convicted, and then he was, um, uh, he was sentenced to be uh, shot through firing squad, which, if you recall, actually firing squad is a more honorable way to be sentenced to death than, let's say, hanging, because normally pirates would not be shot, but because of his uh, family name and all that, he had the right uh, to a more honorable death, as they say. And they say that as he was being prepared, he did not want a blindfold and um, shouted for his beloved Puerto Rico. That's why he's identified as a hero of the Puerto Rican independence movement and a hero of Puerto Rico, trying to give back. Where have we heard that we should tax the rich to ensure that the rest of society has access to housing and to nutrition and to education and health care? This has been a theme for hundreds and hundreds of years. This is not new, and we're still fighting the same fight. So it's a wonderful story, and I wanted to share it with you in this video. Now on to my favorite part of the video, 
book recommendations. And I found a couple of books on El Pirata Cofresi, The Cofresi Pirate, and I'll link them below. But even more importantly, I thought it would be good to share a book about modern piracy. The title of the book is called Vulture Capitalism. It's by Naomi Klein. And it's a book that talks about how tragedies, like hurricanes, are used by vulture capitalists to come in and privatize resources that should be used for the people. And so it's a great book. It's a good read. I highly recommend it. Um, again, I'll link it below if it's not at your local library or at your local bookseller. Happy to uh, link copies below. So as always, thank you so much for coming to the end of this journey and the video. This is a journey, a joint journey. So we want to hear from you what you like, what you'd like to hear about. And um, so as always, we wish you mucho cariño, eh, mucho amor y mucha salud. Muchas gracias.